Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you, Dr. Helen. So during my undergrad, uh, I did a study on the utility of ultrasound in the diagnosis and management of single-term pregnancies with idiopathic polydramias at our epitome medicine units. Sorry, we are having a technical issue. So basically, with the motivation from high neonatal mortality of 35.94 deaths per 1,000 live births recorded in Zimbabwe in 2021, high in comparison to the expected neonatal mortality target of 12 per 1,000 live births uh, uh, developed in 2015, as highlighted in the Sustainable Development Goals. Therefore, in order to achieve this Sustainable Development Goal in Zimbabwe, they have devised an ultrasound-focused antenatal care framework in order to improve infant and maternal health. And fetal medicine being one of the ultrasound-focused antenatal care, um, we can see at the fetal medicine unit a sizable number of single-term pregnancies with idiopathic polydramas being diagnosed. So basically, a bit of uh, literature review concerning this idiopathic polydramas population the perinatal mortality is said to be two to five times higher than normal pregnancy, and also idiopathic polydramas in pregnancy has long been recognized as carrying a high risk of adverse outcomes. And in Zimbabwe, there is lack of information concerning this idiopathic polydramas population. Therefore, with the dearth of data in Zimbabwe, it means there could be a high risk of poor decision making in the management of idiopathic polydramas. Therefore, it was important for this study to be conducted in order to fill in the gap so that we mitigate this risk and standardize ultrasound practice while being, uh, and also set, setting a baseline for future researches. Therefore, I went on to conduct this study with the following objectives. Firstly, I was to determine the proportion of singleton pregnancies with idiopathic polydromias amongst the polydromias population at Harare Fetal Medicine Units. Secondly, to determine the antenatal obstetric ultrasound findings associated with idiopathic polydromias in singleton pregnancies. And lastly, to establish the outcomes of singleton pregnancies with idiopathic polydromias in Harare. So in order to achieve these objectives, a retrospective cross-sectional study with 64 participants from both Salim Gabe Hospital and Paranya Group of Hospital, utilizing the non-probability convenient sampling method and targeting singleton pregnancies that were diagnosed with idiopathic polydramas. And basically to note for others, uh, this idiopathic polydramas is polydramas with unknown cause. And the study, Went on to note that uh, idiopathic polydramas contributes majority amongst the individual causes of polydramas, as highlighted on this bar graph, which is showing the distribution of the polydramas. And as you can see, idiopathic polydramas is constituting 42%, the majority, and followed by polydramas due to fetal defects and also polydramas due to diabetes. And uh, to note, uh, in this study, the measurement of amniotic fluid was done using the single deposit book, which is the standard method at the fetal medicine unit because it is also less time cold. And my results concerning the causes of polydramas, they were similar to a study done in Germany in 2012, which noted a 40% prevalence of idiopathic polydramas. And also in USA in 2013, a systematic review was done and it noted 
a prevalence range of 50 to 60 percent. Then uh, I went on to narrow down, uh, emphasizing only on the idiopathic polydramous population, leaving out the other causes, the 58 percent, because on this 58 percent, they are already documented antenatal and postnatal management, and the one for the idiopathic is lacking. So I'll go on to talk about other interesting findings uh, concerning this idiopathic po uh, population. So basically, these are the antenatal ultrasound findings. So I will start with this estimated fetal weight hard log chart. So basically, uh, this is showing that majority of the idiopathic polydramous fetus had normal growth as highlighted here about 75% are uh, between the 10th centile line the ninth center of line. And also to note, uh, only 25% were large for gestational age fetus uh, on this idiopathic polydramous population, which is demonstrated here above the ninth center of line. And these results were similar to a study done in 2017 in Ireland. And also, they noted what I noted in this study, where we don't have any fetus below the 10th centile line meaning there were no small for gestational age fetuses in this state, in this study. And this is supported but by what is already documented in literature by Pri Pasa et al. in 2012, who noted that polyhydramias is rarely associated with fetal placental insufficient, which is more likely to be associated with oligohydramias. And moving on to this pie chart, Basically, it is showing the distribution of severity of idiopathic polydramas, and it shows that most cases of idiopathic polyhydramas, the 97% they are mouth cases, and mouth cases using the single dose was 8 to 11 centimeters. And looking on to answer my last objective uh, on the results section, here is just this table is just uh, showing the distribution of the pregnancy outcome of this idiopathic polydramas. Before I go through each variable, to just summarize here, the study noted that idiopathic polydramas is not is associated with good perinatal outcome. Majority they were good outcomes. Here, on the variable of the delivery birth weight, it shows that a normal birth weight was prevailing. That is the 89%. And on the category of gestational maturity and delivery, it shows that term delivery was prevailing more, 73%. And in terms of the mode of delivery, most cases, they were delivered through cesarean section. And to note here, all the moderate cases in this study, they contribute to the 62% of cesarean section. They were delivered through the cesarean section. In, in terms of the outcome score, it's um, five minutes and also it's 10 minutes, Majority of the idiopathic polydramas cases, they had good to excellent APCA score. Then in terms of the birth outcomes here, most of the women in this study, they gave birth to live babies. And also to note here, there was just one case of school birth uh, uh, constituting the 2%. Uh, this one still, uh, uh, birth case, it took place at 28 weeks of gestation. And it was associated with mild polyhydramias uh, because the single deeper school was 9.2 centimeters. And after follow up, the still birth was found to be unexplained, meaning there was no cause found for it. And lastly, um, on the admission column, majority of the of the babies they were not uh, admitted after delivery. Therefore, this study it concluded that idiopathic polyhydramias it contributes. 42% uh, of the polydramas cases, and also idiopathic polydramas is associated with good ultrasound findings and perinatal outcomes, as I have already illustrated on the results section. And also, it is important uh, to note that ultrasound can diagnose idiopathic polydramas after ruling out fetal defects associated with polyhydramas. Therefore, from my study, I recommend a detailed anomaly scan that we will be able to pull out for deeper so that we are sure that it is really idiopathic polydramas and to do the correct management. And also screening tests for diabetes like the OGT to be routinely done in pregnant women so that we know what is causing pathologies of those pregnant women. And a standard of obstetric ultrasound care of idiopathic polydramas uh, patients should be routinely practiced. Standard obstetric ultrasound care 
because from this study, it's not that idiopathic polydromas is associated mostly with good perinatal outcomes. However, this study recommends a prospective case control study to be conducted because of the limitation from this study. Since it was a retrospective study, it was vulnerable to missing data. Basically, these were some of my references. And lastly, I would like to acknowledge, to acknowledge Mr. El Kumbula from the University of Zimbabwe, who was my principal supervisor, Dr. C. Berenga and Mr. A. Zanga, who were my co-supervisor for the advice. And also, importantly, the Fetal Medicine Unit team in Zimbabwe, who provided me with the primary data that I used for my research. Thank you.